Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor, and tonight I'm going to show you how to make a double-sided bow for a double-sided door hanger. <laughs> So I hope you guys will join me. This cute door hanger right here is the perfect door hanger for fall. Oh, I just realized I need to switch my camera so that you guys aren't seeing it backwards. Sorry about that. So this is a great door hanger for fall because it's going to start you out as soon as the fall season begins and it's going to carry you all the way through Thanksgiving. So if you love this door hanger and you want to paint it alongside me, I'm going to be teaching you step by step exactly how to do it, even if you've never painted before. Even if you're terrified of hand lettering, because I promise doing it my way is not going to be hard. And even if you can't draw a stick figure, okay? Hey, April. Welcome. Hey, Peyton. Hey, Anita. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to make a, a double-sided bow for a double-sided door hanger, okay? You might be wondering, on a door hanger design like this, where do you attach the bow? How do you make the bow? How do you make it so that, you know, it's visible on both sides? And so I've got a little hack for you because I've been making double-sided door hangers for like, I don't know, seven years now, a long time. And um, I figured it out several years ago and I've got a little way that I do it. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it too. Hey, Cindy. Uh, Katie wants to know what day is the live video for this challenge. So if you decide to sign up for our fall double-sided door hanger challenge, or actually we're calling it a workshop, um, it's $10. It starts out uh, August 16th. It's five days in a row, August 16th through the 20th. The, the videos will be in the evenings and um, we're going to be doing it live together inside a Facebook group. And so even if you can't participate live, don't worry about that. We will be, um, those videos will be available on replay. Marina says, will be, you be showing how to attach the jute string? Yes. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways. So my jute string is already on this, but um, I can show you how to attach it anyway. Hey, Jean. She said she can't wait for this. And she said, I just, uh, I hope I'm registered. You should be. If you've already signed up, you should be registered. You should have gotten an email. So for those of you who have not, I have put the link um, up in the video description. I will put it here in the comments as well in case you for some reason just can't find it. You can sign up right here. There we go. There's the link to sign up for the challenge. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need is some, a roll of jute. And um, this is the kind that I like to use. And you're also going to need some jute, or sorry. My apologies. Not, I couldn't. Hush, Siri. <laughs> Siri was talking. Um, not, not jute, burlap. And you're going to need a roll of jute. So burlap, this is about six inches wide, and jute string. Hey, Phyllis, welcome. Hey, PC sister, Sandy. Um, speaking of Painters Clubhouse, you guys will have an opportunity to join after you participate in the workshop. So if you're interested in that, um, just keep that in mind. Thank you, Linda. This one uh, is Cotton Chaos, Cotton Chaos t-shirt. Hey, Danielle. All right, so you're gonna need your burlap ribbon, right? And so this piece, I'm gonna need to get a ruler because I know some of you guys who are note takers are gonna ask me, specifically how long my burlap is. And even though I never measure it, you guys like to measure things. So this piece is 16 inches. So roughly 16 inches. They don't have to be exact. So cut off a piece of this. We only going to need one. And then you're going to look at the two sides of your door hanger, right? So this is side number one, where we're going to teach you to paint. Michelle says, uh, can you tell us what kind of brushes we need? Michelle, just go out and get a cheap set of brushes like at Walmart or somewhere that look kind of like this. You know, that'll that'll get you done. Like just a little variety pack, okay? Um, Linda says I'm a member too. Awesome. So you need to pick out probably two kinds of ribbon that will coordinate with this side. I chose uh, this ribbon right here that I already had pre-cut. It is burlap sort of looking on the back with white polka dots. So it kind of offsets. I didn't want anything that kind of blends too much with what I've currently got on going on. So this ribbon is, I feel like I'm talking 90 miles an hour. I'm sorry about that. This ribbon is two and a half inches wide. So I've got two strips of that and I went ahead and dovetailed it on the end. You can quickly do that by folding your ribbon in half and snipping it and you'll get that little dovetailed in. Hey, Pamela. So I've got two pieces of that. And then I've also got, I couldn't wait to reuse this ribbon if I'm being honest with you. I bought this ribbon from Deco Exchange. You guys know Damon, right? Damon Oates from Deco Exchange. And I've been dying to use it on something. It's kind of a metallic leopard print on gray. And so, no, it doesn't perfectly match this side, but I feel like leopard print is the new neutral. And it's like a funky little 
you know, splash of leopard print. So this is the colors I'm gonna use on this side. So flipping it around. Hey, Jessica, your six-year-old daughter's watching. We'll tell her I said hello. Hey, Cindy. So for this side, I chose, you're always gonna want one that's wider, right? So a two and a half inch wide ribbon. I just chose, chose a basic red that kind of matches, okay? I couldn't find a green that matches this in the background. All the greens I had were like lime green. So we went with red. And then the color that I'm gonna use on top of that is this one right here. It's a really cool like mustard yellow. Um, trying to figure out where I remember where I bought it, Hobby Lobby. Um, and it's got like a, what do you call that pattern? Is that herringbone? So we're gonna put those two together. I thought they made a really nice fall combination. And that one's a little skinnier. Now all of these ribbons are wired ribbon. That's important, okay? So I'm gonna hang this up here. Actually, we'll put it on the pumpkin side for now. For those of you just joining us, I'm showing you how to make a double-sided bow for a double-sided door hanger, okay? And we're gonna learn how to paint this door hanger in our upcoming fall double-sided door hanger workshop. If you wanna sign up, I've put the link down below for you guys, it's only $10. So I'm gonna angle my camera down so you guys can see a little better. There we go, make sure I'm in the middle. We've got our 16 inch wide piece of burlap. We also are gonna need to go ahead and cut a piece of jute string. If you wanna know the size, this piece is nine inches. Eight inches would probably be enough. You just need enough that you can like wrap it around and tie it in a knot, okay? Dina says, is the class gonna be okay for beginners? Yes, you can be a complete beginner who's never painted before and still come paint with us in the workshop. Don't worry about that. If you have any more questions, just put them down below. I'm gonna try to answer as I go. If I miss a question, feel free to text me your questions. I've also put my text number in the description of the video. Um, and today is actually day 10 of 30 days of Facebook Live. And how many of you guys, raise your hand in the comments, thought that I was gonna forget? <laughs> I know at least one of you guys texted me and was like, are you doing a live today? Yes, girl, I'm doing a live today. I just had church this evening. I was busy today. So I'm just now getting around to it. Not to mention, I know some of you guys don't normally get to watch me during the daytime. So I'm live here at night. Um, Sandra wants to know if we can cut our own door hanger. Absolutely. I would recommend that you just cut an 18 inch round, okay? Um, can we order the board from you? Yes, we are selling the boards for just $12. That is about the price you would pay at Hobby Lobby, half price. So, um, April says, I've actually been able to watch all 10. Woohoo, April, awesome. Okay, let's go ahead. Pause the questions for now. Just hold them for just a second while I show you how to make the bow. All right, we're gonna make side one. We're gonna, well, hang on. Okay, here's another tip. Get everything cut first. I feel like I'm like <laughs> doing squats here because I didn't wanna sit down for this. I knew I was gonna have to like do a lot of moving around. So um, get everything cut first. I already had those pieces cut, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the pieces for the other side. Makes everything way easier if you cut it all ahead of time. So cut two pieces of the wider ribbon. It's gonna be on the back and one piece of the shorter ribbon for the front of each side of the bow. And then dovetail your ends, fold it over and clip. Fold it over and clip. Corey. Corey, I don't think you've missed a single day of my 30 days of lives either. He wants to come in and sit on a live and help. So, Corey, what are you wanting to do? Are you wanting to paint together on a live? Because I have to go live this weekend, and you're probably coming over to hang out at the house on the, this weekend. For those of you who don't know, Corey Downey, he is our beloved Uncle Corey around here. He's not really blood uncle, but he has been dubbed Uncle Corey in our household, and he hangs out with us every weekend. He comes over for dinner on Sunday nights. So maybe we can do a live together this weekend, Corey. I bet everybody would love to get to know you a little better. You could either paint with me or something. I don't know. Casey says, is there a checklist of things? Yes. So when you sign up, there's going to be a supply list. You can go in and download. Okay. All right. Good, Corey. All right. So we've got all of our pieces of ribbon uh, cut. We've got three pieces for the front side and three pieces Hold on, that looks like two. There we go. Three pieces for the back side and one piece of burlap, one piece of jute. All right, you ready? Here's, here's the tricky part. We're gonna assemble it. Hang on, let's just pull up a chair because I'm doing too much squatting around. I thought I was gonna stand up for this. There we go. I've got too much energy to burn out. All right, so we're gonna fold this over toward the middle and just make it overlap, okay? That's all we did, overlap it. And then put your finger where it overlaps. And then take your other two fingers and scrunch it like so, and then pull your finger out of the middle so that you have a scrunched little bow like this. 
It's not gonna look real pretty at first, but that's okay. Um, the other thing I forgot to mention, no, I didn't forget to mention that. Never mind. I'm getting ahead of myself. So scrunch your burlap. We're going to work on side one first. This is a little bit tricky because you have to be able to hold everything. But you know, us mothers, we're used to carrying 30 grocery bags into the house at one time. So you got this. Ready? All right. So we're going to pick up piece number one. Do the same thing. Put your finger in the middle. Use your other two fingers to pinch and pick it up. Now lay it right on top of the spot where it overlaps. Okay, do the same thing with the next piece. Pick it up and then make an X. Sandy says, I don't think the painter's tape was on the list. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. Thank you for letting me know. I will write that down later. <laughs> I don't have anything to write on right now. Um, okay, next piece is gonna go right across the middle. Okay, that's side number one. If for some, we'll, we'll fluff it later, okay? If for some reason you have a hard time holding all this together, go ahead and wrap it with a piece of jute string and tie it off, whatever you gotta do. I like to just do it all at one time. So I'm gonna tie it one time. So now we're gonna work on side number two. So this will be the side for pumpkin. So next let's make the side for the turkey. And again, if you're just now hopping on here, we're gonna teach how to paint this in the workshop. So sign up below. We're just teaching how to make a double-sided bow. So carefully try to keep everything pinched together and flip it over. It's all right if some things shift a little bit. Just try to try to keep it as best as you can. So now side number one's on the bottom. On the top, we're gonna put the back side. So pinch, put your first piece of ribbon. Hold your questions, please. I will get to them in just a moment when my hands are not so busy. <laughs> Okay, make another X out of your two pieces of ribbon. That's what I've done here, I've got an X. And I need to fluff it, but that's okay, we'll do that at the end. And then take your other piece of ribbon and put it right across the middle, okay? Now, while you're holding everything, take your ribbon and replace your fingers. It helps if you've got a table like this and handy that you can like push everything down against and get everything out of your hand. But you gotta keep all that burlap together don't let it wrestle its way out of your grip. Hold on, that piece, there we go. I thought it had flipped over. And while everything is still there, start tying a double knot. If you need to, you could also use um, zip ties or you could use pipe cleaners. I don't know why, but I can never think of the word pipe cleaner. It's like way back in the dusty part of my brain and it just won't come forward every time. All right, so I tied a double knot. This thing looks like a hot mess right now, but that's okay. Rotate your jute string with the knot till that knot is on the bot, like on the bottom of the bow, like on the edge, okay? Not on the front, not on the back, on the edge. Okay, now that we've got a hot mess of a bow, we can take and we can kind of fluff our ribbon. I do that by taking and putting my three fingers behind the fat part of the ribbon and then I take my thumb to kind of fluff it up and out. So just do that around each side. <laughs> Brenda, I'm so glad you're loving this. Um, yes, so Michelle, the plan is to go, I'm gonna go live inside the workshop group to show how to put the template together, but I was gonna do that today, but I realized that the template's too large. So if you've already downloaded and printed the template, you may have to print it again. I'm so sorry. But to fit on an to fit on an 18 inch round circle, it's gonna have to be a little smaller. So, um, okay, Kathy says wrap it a couple times before you tie. I only wrapped it one time. I wrapped it one time and I gave it a double knot. All right, so see, it looks a little better now, right? Let's carefully flip it over. And while we're not smashing the back, let's fluff the front. Um, you can never think of the word sheetrock. It drives you crazy. There are some words like that that are just stuck in the back of my brain, and I don't know why, but I have to wait like a good, sometimes 30 seconds for the word to come to the front of my brain, and pipe cleaner is one of those, but once it comes to the front, I can usually say it again within the next two or three minutes, but then if I don't say it for the next 30 minutes, it'll probably be gone. Okay, there we go. So this is side two, and this is side one. Now look, my red is kind of showing up in front of that. I don't want that. So I would kind of like pull it, you know, since it's wired, you can kind of adjust it. So I'm gonna pull it down just a little. So this kind of camouflage is kind of hidden behind all the other fluffiness. And once we actually get it on the door hanger, we can adjust it even more. Okay, 
So now you're wondering how in the world do you get this on the door hanger, right? So here's our door hanger. This is the one we're teaching in the workshop for $10. You can learn how to paint both sides. Um, okay, so here's the part you guys were asking about to, to attach the jute string. I, because I used quarter inch MDF, which if you purchase one of our wooden rounds, you can attach it this way. Um, if you're using quarter inch revolution plywood or some other kind of plywood that you have cut, you may not be able to attach your string this way. But there's a couple of options, okay? So the way I did it was I actually stapled into the end of the wood and I just attached the jute string and just tied a knot so it can't slip out. So it's stapled here and here. It's not on the front and it's not on the back. It's on the edge. Now, the reason you can't do this with Revolution plywood or something else is because it's not dense enough. It would splinter and it would make a mess. So your option is gonna be to, and hang on, let me grab my staple gun so I can kind of actually show you how you can do this. You could either drill holes, which I don't like to do. I don't like drilling holes in my door hanger. You could drill holes and run string or ribbon through to make a hanger, or you could do it like this. So on side number one, where am I gonna want my bow, right? Hang on, here's side number one. We're gonna want our bow like right about, hang on, it's hard for me to hold it and look. Probably right about there, okay? So right there, on the front side, I'm gonna staple in my string. Yes, I'm stapling on the front, but the bow is gonna hide it. So staple your string down where you want your bow to go. Let me tie a little knot so it doesn't slip out. There we go. Now we can slip this string through the knot on our bow. Just gonna slide it up on there. If you can't figure out how to do that, you could even tie this tie this around this, but I'm just gonna go the easy way out and just slip it under there. So I'm putting the bow on the string. See, it's attached. So side number one is right here. Hold on, let me get all the, hold on. I think I got it upside down. <laughs> you need to attach it to the bottom of the bow, which I guess either side could be the bottom of the bow, but it felt like it was gonna be crazy. So we'll just do it this way. All right, so when it's on this side, it'll sit like that. I'll have to fluff it again. All right, so it's covering up the spot where I stapled in my jute string. I'm so sorry if I'm missing everybody's questions. Hold them till the end and I will answer all your questions at the end. So now you're gonna flip it over, okay? And you're gonna figure out where you want your bow to go on the other side. Well, I want it to go like right here. So I'm gonna staple it in there and I'm gonna tie a knot in my jute so that it kind of ties a knot around the staple. There we go. Now, let me stand up so you can see this magic. <laughs> um, okay, somebody said they were scared. Don't be scared, I got you. We're gonna teach you how to make this. So this is side number one with the pumpkin. And on, you know, at the beginning of the fall, we can slide our bow down, down, down till it covers up that staple and we can hang it on the door and then we can fluff this side of it and tuck the other uh, ribbons back behind the burlap. It'll just add extra volume back there, but you don't have to see them. They can hide behind there. So there's side number one. Can you see that? You kind of can. Side number one. Okay, when, uh, when it's almost time for Thanksgiving, you flip it around on your door Hang it up, slide your bow, whoops, hang on, maybe don't hang it up first. Slide your bow to the other side. And then when it's on the other side, flip it over. So that the other side is showing. And just fluff that side. Ta-da, oh, you guys can't see it. Ta-da, so there's the other side. I forget the camera is flipped, and every time I dodge right, it takes me left. What do you think? Was it too complicated? It's not complicated. If, it's com if it seemed complicated, it's because I had a hard time explaining it, but I don't think I did. I think I did a pretty good job. So hopefully that was easy enough for you guys to understand how to make a double-sided bow. 
April says that's so creative. Well, girl, when you do as many paint parties as I have done back in the day, you have to figure out how to get creative with using very little ribbon because you have like 30 people at a party. And so, you know, if everybody was making two bows for a double-sided door hanger, that's a lot of ribbon. So this, this way uses less burlap. It kind of actually gives it more volume because there's more stuff on the back. And it, you know, it works for both sides. So now when we're ready for this side, we just slide it across like so and put it right there. <laughs> Darlene says it looks easy enough. Anita says that's so cool. I'm glad you guys like it. Of course, you could do a different kind of bow if you wanted to, but I feel like this is a really good bow because it uses scraps that you have like these these were scrap pieces left over from another bow that I had a long time ago and so I didn't even have to cut those I just reused them okay what questions do you have about the workshop I would love to answer any questions I may have missed some so if I did if I didn't answer your question just put it back in and I will answer it now um, we are going to give you a supply list of everything that you're going to need most of this stuff you may even already have at home in your craft room okay Shannon that wants to know what kind of, what size painter's tape. I believe the painter's tape that I used was about two inches wide and it's frog tape. So if you want the big, fat, chunky buffalo plaid, use the two inch wide. If you want the skinny buffalo plaid, use the one inch wide. This is the two inch. Jean says, I would never, who would have thought? <laughs> uh, you figure things out when you have to, but see how like that doesn't look so good because it's not covered up. But when you slide your bow over to the other side, it covers it up just fine. So you don't have to see where you stapled it in. Just like that. I need to cut that little piece of jute string right there. Uh, yes, I have something on the bottom of my staple gun. I just put a like taped on a piece of cardboard that prevents those staples from going all the way through your wood. So that's a little hack. Hey, Kim from West Virginia. Any, oh, I have messed my bow up. Any other questions about the fall workshop? It starts August 16th. It'll run for five days. We're going to paint live with you inside the group. It's going to be super fun. Even if you can't watch it live, you can watch it on replay. Um, don't forget to add painter's tape to the list. Thank you for that reminder. So Be Betty wants to know what size is the wood round. I recommend an 18 inch size. If you want, you can order it from us for just $12 plus shipping. That's the same price you would pay at Hobby Lobby when it's half price. Where's your favorite place to get ribbon? Deco Exchange. That's where I got this super cute ribbon right here. Um, do we need to print a 16 inch template? So the one that I used on this is a 14 inch size. Uh, the actual the actual image from the front to the back of the letter is 14 inches. So we are resizing it for you guys. So if you had a hard time getting it to fit on your round, that is why we're gonna give you a new one. Melinda wants to know, do you have a shop that we can shop at? Yes, shopdoorhangers.com. Where is the template? It is linked in the files of the Facebook group and it's also on the website. You'll have a link to that when you sign up. There should be an email. Um, where do you order the wood circle? You can order it at shopdoorhangers.com. There should be a link inside that, um, inside the supply list. Uh, the new template has not been posted yet. They, I, they just became aware of the issue of it being too big today. And so they're working on getting that fixed for you guys. What size circle is that? This one is 18 inches. <laughs> um, let me see if there are any other questions that I might could think of for you guys. If you're worried about this hand lettering, I know this looks intimidating, okay? Don't worry about it. That's gonna be on the template. And I do teach you how to do it using a paint brush. So you don't even have to have the Posca pens to do this part. I just used a little round tip brush with the pointy end. So that's all you're really gonna need for that part. Somebody said they just joined my group. Awesome, welcome. Do we print the template or just on just normal printer? Yes. You can just use a normal printer. It'll print out multiple sheets, I think like six sheets total. And then um, I'm gonna go live in the group as soon as the new size is um, posted and I'll show you guys how to assemble it. So you don't have to do that yet. Uh, the workshop is free to Painters Clubhouse members. So if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, do not pay for it. Wanda, this kind of wood is called MDF. So if you order one from us, that's what you'll get. If you wanna cut one yourself, you could do it out of any kind of plywood. I recommend quarter inch revolution plywood. What is your Amazon store? Um, I will put that in the comments for you. Here you go. Uh, 
no, 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 no. Hang on. It takes me a second to type it in. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Hopefully that works. Um, what other questions? What is the clubhouse? So, Melinda, the Painter's Clubhouse is my membership where I teach door hanger painting. It's a lot of fun. It's been around for three whole years now. And every month we teach two door hangers. We give you the printable templates for those. And we encourage you to start learning how to cut them out yourself. But of course, not all people are comfortable with that when they first join Clubhouse. So we offer a 20% discount code that, new, that members can use in our shop to buy the wooden blanks if they choose. Um, but of course, we have videos walking you through how to cut these yourself. So if that's something that you decide to learn, we have every resource available to teach you that. And of course, we teach different techniques like how to hand letter and how to uh, paint buffalo plaid, how to do leopard print, um, how to paint camouflage, anything you could really want to learn. It's on there. Um, what's the code for the Painters Clubhouse to sign into the Facebook I can't give out any codes on here, Sharon. You'll have to go look in the Facebook group. Um, oh, thank you for saying that, Sandy. I appreciate that. Thank you, Marina. You guys are awesome. Thank you for leaving your testimonials about Painter's Clubhouse. All right, I think I got to everybody's questions. If for some reason you did not get your question answered on this live, okay, Denise says she couldn't get the Amazon link to work. Of course, I probably entered, entered it wrong. Amazon.com. Yeah. forward slash shop forward slash maybe it's southern adornments decor instead of just southern adornments try that one if for some reason you did not get your question answered you can text me i put the uh, the phone number in the video description april says when i signed up for the workshop i declined painters clubhouse as i was still deciding can i join it and get the early bird stuff yes april you have until the 23rd to make up your mind. <laughs> so no worries. You've still got plenty of time. Um, <laughs> thank you, Laura. You're so sweet. All right. You said that link worked. Good. All right. Well, I will see you guys tomorrow for Facebook Live number 11. So if you want to be notified when I go live, just send me a text. See y'all next time. Bye.